our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The past few months have been challenging for most of us. Some of our dear ones were infected with the virus and have been healed. Some were not healed. Most of us have been praying to the Lord that he would remove the virus. There are others who are going through other health conditions, other problems in life. In the light of what we all are going through, I want us to read from Paul's letter to the Corinthian church, the second epistle, 
chapter 12, verses 7 to 10. Paul's letter to the Corinthian church, the second epistle, chapter 12, verses 7 to 10. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that, the, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of God. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time you have given us to come together in this manner. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we have hope, the hope of eternal life. We thank you for the ever-abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the Bible, the written word of God, and for the church at large. And Father, you know the times we all are living in. And so I pray, O oh Lord, that we would find strength in you and you alone. Praying for those who are not feeling well and those who are sick and suffering. We pray for your comforting presence to surround them, that your presence would be real. As we reflect on your word this time, O oh Lord, I pray that you would open the eyes of our hearts. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. For we offer this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the passage that was read to us, Paul writes about an experience in his life, a painful experience and how he was able to face it. And therefore, the title this evening is, How do I face my difficult times? How do I face my thorny situations? It says here that the thorn was given him, it was given to him. It is like a pin, a needle, which created pain when it was poked. It says here, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. He was going through a torment. This particular thorn in his life was making his life painful. Some of us think of people as thorns in our lives. Here Paul uses another word referring to the thorn and the word is weakness. You find that in verse 9 and verse 10 where he mentions about his weakness. So this particular thorn made him weak and ineffective. And his prayer was, if only this thorn is removed, I can be more stronger, I can be more effective. He somehow does not mention it because we do not know what it is. Many scholars have guessed that it could have been malaria or epilepsy or an eye problem which he had faced. But whatever it is, it was a chronic problem and he suffered with it. And it is a good thing for each one of us because we can relate to that situation no matter what you are going through. You can put yourself in the situation where Paul is and can say that there is something which is so painful in my personal life. It could be emotional, physical or relational. But if you are going through a thorny situation, I want you to relate to yourself to this passage here. Because there was a point in his life where he despaired for life. He mentions that in the first chapter of 2 Corinthians, verses 8 and 9. It says here, so, we, so that we despaired even for life. Indeed, our hearts felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God. So there is a purpose for every situation in the life of a Christian. Here it says that it was because he would not become conceited, to keep me from becoming conceited. Paul had a problem with pride. 
all of us face this situation in our lives. We have what is known as self-sufficiency. We think that we can manage life without God. To keep us humble, the thorn in our lives. Some of us were not touched by the COVID-19. And that does not mean that we are much better than those who suffered. If you had your needs met, if you had food on your table, if your health was good during the season, let me tell you, you need to stay humble. We need to stay humble and we need to thank God. Because there is a purpose behind every situation in the life of a Christian. Paul here is seen begging or pleading with God. He says in verse 8, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Three times he pleaded. Have you prayed to the Lord? Have you begged him? Lord, remove this situation. Remove this problem in my body. I know many of us must have prayed this prayer. Please take it away. I'm not able to bear it. That's what he was saying because the torment was so great. He says, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. The thorn wasn't removed. But his prayer was answered. Listen to this carefully. The thorn wasn't removed, but his prayer was heard and he got a response from God. It says, but he said to me, he prayed and the Lord responds. Paul heard the words of the Lord and God said, he has answered his prayer without granting his request. He heard his prayer but has not granted his request. A very important lesson for us as Christians. As we grow in our Christian lives, we need to spiritually mature. There are times God will answer our prayers. Sometimes he hears our prayers and does not answer in the way you and I want him to answer. And that is the lesson we need to learn as Christians. That God does answer but may not be in the way we want him to. Most of us have heard this, that God answers in three ways. He says, yes, no, and wait. If you are a spiritual baby, you always want it to be yes. As you mature in your Christian life, you should be able to accept God when he says no, when he asks us to wait. So for Paul, it was a clear no. God says, I'm not going to remove this, but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do something much more in your life. And this is what it says in verse 9. He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. For my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. When Paul prayed for God to remove the thorn, this was his answer. This was his response. He says, I'm going to give you grace that is enough for you to go on in this life and secondly I'm going to make a provision for your weakness because I'm going to give you my power. God says I'm going to do something which is much greater than what you asked for. Why grace? Because we are weak. You said you're weak so I'm going to give you grace. Grace is nothing but God's unmerited favor upon our lives. Grace and power the truth is, when you and I experience God's grace in our lives, in our difficult situations, it is said that our situations would work for us and not against us. No matter what you are going through, if only you express, experience His grace in your, life, in, in your life, you will know that the situation you are in will work for your benefit in favor of you. If things seem to be working against you, you need to stop and think whether you have experienced and accessed God's grace in your life. And secondly, it says, I, my power is made perfect in weakness. The NLT, the New Living Translation reads it like this, my power works best in weakness. I like that. The Lord is telling to Paul, my power works best in weakness. It is a message for all of us. And therefore, this is what Paul responds, therefore, he says, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, 
a phrase which is so important in Paul's life. He says, therefore, I boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. The point is not that he is happy about it. He is joyful. He is excited because God is there in the situation. God has a purpose. God is going to do something in my situation no matter what. He was assured that the Lord was with him in the thorny situation. And therefore, he says this, he says, that is why for Christ's sake, this is a phrase which is over and over again mentioned in Paul's writings. Remember in, in Philippians chapter 3 verse 7, Philippians chapter 3 verse 7, he says, but whatever was for my, to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 1.21 For the sake of Christ, the focus was changed from his thorn to Christ. For the sake of Christ, Christ became his focus. So whenever I experience the torment of the thorn in my life, in my flesh, I know for sure that I am going to experience more of God's grace and I am going to experience more of his power. And therefore he says, for when I am weak, I am strong. All of us know Jacob in the Old Testament. Jacob is known as a deceiver. He was a deceiver all through his life. Until chapter 32, you find that he is having a wrestling match. He was wrestling with a person. He was all alone. And it says, but Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Verse 26 of chapter 32. And then the man said, he, the man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Why was the person asking his name? Because earlier when his father asked him, he said, I am Esau. At that point of time, Jacob was confessing who he really was. I am Jacob, I am the deceiver. And God blesses him with a new name. He says, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. God has blessed him with a new name, Israel. Today we know that Israel is, is the nation named after Jacob. And it says in verse 31, the sun rose above him and he passed Peniel and he was limping because of his hip. The blessing was a dislocation of his hip. He prayed for a blessing and he got a dislocated hip. Why did he do that? Why at this point in his life? Because all the while Jacob had been running away from God or running away from people. So the fact that he was limping shows that he had to be dependent. So every time he limped, he had to remember God. So Jacob would testify that my limp was a reminder that I had to be dependent on God. I cannot run away from him anymore. And therefore, whenever I am weak, I am strong because God is there with me. My dear friends, as we close this morning, the thorn in Paul's life was real. It was not an illusion. It is the same with many of our lives. We are going through serious problems at times. There is no doubt about it. I know we have prayed like Paul prayed sometimes, really pleaded that God would bring about a change. But God promises something much greater as he did for Paul. He promises his grace that is sufficient. His grace is always in abundance. His grace is sufficient and he says, my power is made perfect in weakness. When we are weak, you and I can experience his power. My dear friends, sometimes when it comes to physical healing, let me tell you that God is healed. Though he can heal, for some reason he does not do that. 
Some are healed and some are not. But as his children, our task is to continue in our prayer, continue in our worship, continue in our trusting the Lord, whether we are healed or not. Apostle Paul stands as a perfect example for us, a real proof, though he was a man of God, a man who served the Lord all his life, who had courageous faith, a man of great power and prayer, and it. We see that he did not experience instant healing or instant results in his life. My dear friends, when we pray for healing, we must entrust our bodies into the hands of the Lord. We must recognize that nothing can separate us from the love of God. I want us to read Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, a very, very beautiful passage. The whole of the chapter is great, but then it says here in verses 35, Romans 8, 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardships or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers, neither health nor depth, height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from God's love. That should be the driving force in our lives. What Paul is reminding us, what God is reminding us this morning is our spiritual condition is more important than our physical condition. Our spiritual condition is more important than our physical condition. We need to turn to the Lord in situations that are really painful, which are which are like a torment in our lives. When you're going through pain, maybe when we go through difficult times, maybe hear the voice of the Lord saying, my grace is sufficient for you. And my strength, my power is made perfect in weakness. Maybe be able to say along with Paul, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Our gracious God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reminder that you are with us in our troubles. You are with us when we go through pain. You are with us, Lord, when we are not healed. We thank you for reminding us that when we are weak, we are actually strong because your grace is sufficient for us and your power is made perfect in our weakness. Your power works best in our weakness and therefore, oh Lord, in all our weakness, we commit our lives into your hands, praying for those who are going through difficult times, especially those who are going through health issues, which are beyond themselves. Pray that they would experience your healing touch and Lord, that they would experience your power in their personal lives. Lord, that we would always focus on you and not on our problems. To that extent, we commit ourselves into your hands and we offer this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you and all those who love the Lord both now and always. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good week ahead. Amazing grace, how sweet the saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now found. Was blind, but now I see. Was great.